A few days ago, I had the privilege of speaking or sharing about languages at a Turkish school. I could record my presentation for you. Some of you on Instagram saw that I was doing this and you asked if you could see it. So I'm really happy to share with you today um, what I was sharing about, which is your language story. Uh, being able to find a narrative for yourself in your language learning story and uh, sharing a bit about my life with languages. Merhaba, <laughs> nasılsınız? It's great to be here. Uh, I'm just going to have a short presentation, maybe 20 minutes, sharing with you about my language learning journey and some methods I've had um, that I've used uh, over the years. And at the end, there will be plenty of time for questions, so I'd be very happy to chat with you then. So let's get started. Today, we're just talking about finding your language story. So welcome to my chat. Thank you for having me. The agenda for today, I will take you through my language background, a few of my study methods, two mindsets that really helped me learn languages, and three results. What can language learning bring to you? How can it change your life? Uh, a little bit about what I do currently and what you can expect next from me, and then we'll have time for some Q&A and a chat. So I grew up uh, very, very shy. I lacked confidence. If uh, past me was supposed to tell me now that I would be giving a presentation like this, I would not believe it. I was um, completely zero confidence. I was also bullied in school. I moved around in a lot of different countries and it was difficult to make friends. And I thought that I didn't have anything valuable to say. I thought that nobody really cared about um, what I had to say. But really, language learning and languages changed my life. And uh, languages gave me a sense of purpose and identity and confidence. But it takes a long time. It's not possible uh, to learn a language just overnight. And even if you can learn a lot about a language in a few days or a few weeks, it does take years to really hone in your language skills and uh, get used to the mindset of speaking in a different language and growing out of your shell into um, becoming more confident. So let me take you a little bit through my language background. I was born in South Africa and I lived in Pakistan, France, the UAE um, and a bit in Japan. And I didn't always take languages very seriously at school. So here's a picture of South Africa. This is not the city I was born in, but I think it's a really beautiful city. So my home language is Afrikaans. It's very similar to Dutch. And I've gone to English schools my whole life. So you can say I'm home language, bilingual, English and Afrikaans. And then we moved to Pakistan around um, the turn of the millennium, around 2000, 2001. And I started learning a little bit of Urdu and French. I always thought, well, these are school subjects. I don't really take it very seriously. I just want to get good grades. Then we moved to Dubai and I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to learn Arabic at school. And it was quite difficult for me. I think when we learn languages at school, sometimes we focus a lot on grades and homework and tests. So I never actually learned how to write I never learned how to write Arabic properly when I was at school. I used to look at it like it was pictures. I thought, oh, this one looks like a slide and this one looks like a W and I memorized it visually. And it was only until years later that I thought I should have put in more effort and uh, not taken school language learning for granted. So I didn't take languages seriously, but then I did. Some things changed. I started learning Korean about 10 years ago. So it's been my longest uh, learning foreign language and it was the first language that I have completely self-studied. So my mom saw an ad in the newspaper for free Korean lessons and she said, don't you want to try? And I thought, mm, that's kind of a weird idea of yours, but let me see. And uh, I just fell completely in love with the language. The culture is fascinating, the way the language is constructed, learning a new script. Korean was really just a fascinating language for me. And after that, I started learning Japanese. Korean and Japanese have very similar grammar structures. And uh, you can almost translate Korean to Japanese word by word because the sentence structure is similar. So it took me a very, very long time to get comfortable in Korean, but not such a long time in Japanese. 
because they were quite similar. After that, I moved to Singapore. And as I mentioned near the start, uh, Mandarin Chinese is one of the official languages that is used in Singapore. So I decided to focus a lot more of my time learning Chinese as well. And one of my newest languages is Hungarian. It's very, very difficult. And uh, every language that I learn has a different reason or story behind it. So I listened to Hungarian music maybe three years ago. And I thought, I've never heard something like this. This is absolutely fascinating. Uh, and I think I want to try learning this language. Apart from French, I had never learned, uh, never learned any language from Europe. And it was just a lovely challenge that I'm continuing with now. Then Vietnamese came along the way as well. Uh, fascinating language, very difficult for me to pronounce. Uh, but I really enjoy Southeast Asian languages. So this is one that I've been trying to learn uh, a little while as well. And the reason I started is because I downloaded a song that I thought would be in Korean, but I accidentally downloaded a Vietnamese song. And I listened to it and I thought, I have no idea what, what language is this, I must learn it. So there's another quite uh, uncommon reason for why I started learning Vietnamese. And then Spanish. I think there's actually a YouTube video where I say, I'm never going to learn Spanish and things just changed. So I feel bad for saying that uh, you never know what can happen in life. So I started learning Spanish about two years ago when my mom uh, took some Spanish lessons at work and I really wanted to just practice with her. So whenever I learn a language, my mom tries to learn some words as well and vice versa. So sometimes when I call her, I always say, Hola, madre, ¿qué tal? So we always uh, just greet each other in Spanish over the phone. And I really appreciate being in a family that values language learning as well. After that, I started learning Tagalog recently. It's uh, one of the languages, the official language of the Philippines. Uh, and I can't say I'm fluent in it yet. I'm currently still taking lessons, but that's one of my recent endeavors. And then French again. I thought, well, I've been learning French for uh, 12 years at school and it's become completely rusty. So it's about time I brush up on it. So this is a recent one that I'm trying to work on to get back to a good conversational level. And who knows what's next? Maybe Turkish? We'll see. As you can tell from what I said about Spanish, uh, never say never. You never know what situations or circumstances will happen in your life and a new language might come knocking on your door. So you might be thinking, how did I learn all of these? I've taken you through my timeline, but how exactly? What kind of methods helped me learn all of these languages? I'll take you through three of my methods. The first one is language stacking. This is something that a few multilinguals or polyglots use. And it is learning one language up to an intermediate or advanced level and using it as the language of instruction for another language. So I started learning Japanese using a Korean book over here. As I mentioned earlier, Korean and Japanese grammar are very similar. So it was much easier for me to learn Japanese using a Korean textbook so that I didn't have to translate back in my head uh, Japanese, English, Korean, you know, there were just two languages. That's how I used language stacking to learn Japanese. And after that, when I was comfortable enough to uh, speak Japanese, I started learning Spanish using a Japanese book as well. So here's an example of the Spanish book I have. It's written in Japanese and it teaches you how to write a diary in Spanish. And it's one of my favorite resources now to continue learning Spanish. So that's what you can try, language stacking. So once you're comfortable in one language, try and use it to learn another. It'll help you keep the first language fresh and maybe if the languages are similar enough, even help you to learn faster. The next method, probably something you've heard online a lot, is immersion. Now, when we hear the word immersion, we usually think, okay, that means I have to go to the country and uh, just live there and then I'll be fluent. Absolutely not. There's really no um, necessity to go to another country. You can create an immersive language learning space for yourself in a specific language. As long as you dedicate enough time to lots of listening, reading, writing, and speaking, 
you don't even need to travel to that country and you will be able to learn it. So I have never lived in Korea, but when I was a high school student, now you'll know how old I am, this is from 2012, I decided to do an, um, what do you call it, a part-time job at a Korean restaurant in South Africa. I thought, let me um, earn a little bit of pocket money so that maybe one day I can travel to Korea, but also get some practice and opportunities to speak Korean. So I was not very good at Korean back then. My handwriting was atrocious, but here's a picture uh, from, I don't know, my phone was a brick back in 2012, but uh, I tried to copy down the menu and I remember I was taking orders and I would practice what I needed to say. Uh, so I was so nervous to speak to the customers. I had to practice line by line and ask them, what would you like to order? And it was very um, scary for me, but I knew that putting myself in a situation to hear Korean every day would really be beneficial um, to practicing the language a lot. So that was one example of immersion for Korean. Another example of immersion, immersion was probably at its peak when I applied for an internship in a Japanese company. So I'm a designer and I did a few internships in graphic and packaging design in Tokyo and almost none of the people at those companies spoke English. So don't tell anyone I told you this, but there's a lot of fake it till you make it. I think that's totally fine. If you have to sit and write down a few sentences that you wanna to practice to be able to say, if you need to write down words relevant to a topic and learn those, you can slowly build up your skills there. I didn't know any vocabulary relevant to graphic design when I started my jobs in Japan but I would sit up late at night looking up words related to design and um, typography and I tried to use those words and sentences at my internship. So here's just a photo where I was practicing how to write um, kanji in Japanese for a logo that I created for, um, I don't know if any of you are anime fans, for the anime called One Piece. I helped design packaging for them. So this is just um, trying to work on some logo concepts back then. And there were definitely a lot of sleepless nights where I was stressed about not understanding the meetings or anything, but it slowly helped build my confidence and it was a good way to get lots of immersion with Japanese. I also visited a lot of design and art exhibitions in Tokyo. Language and culture can really never be separated. So by visiting a lot of design exhibitions, I got an insight into how do Japanese designers think? Um, how do they portray their language visually? What kind of aspects of Japanese culture come through in design and art? So when you learn a language, you can't separate culture and um, the spoken language all the time. So it was very beneficial for me as part of immersion to get used to the culture. And it helps if you're doing something that you're interested in. For me, of course, I was absolutely interested in design. You might be interested in sports or cooking and you can find ways to integrate that, integrate your hobbies into your language learning. And the last method I'll discuss is journaling. I love writing. I'm an introvert and a deep thinker. So for me to work through my problems is to write about them a lot. So I thought, well, if I write so much, why don't I try writing in another language? And the reason it was so beneficial for me is when I write in a different language, especially if I'm a beginner, there will be lots of times where I encounter words that I don't understand or don't know. I don't let that stop me. I continue writing. Maybe I'll write it in English, Afrikaans or Korean, that one word. And after that, I will look up the words. So it helps me learn new words just by writing. Here are some pages from my Japanese journals around 2014 and 2015. And I would write an entire page every single day. I try to write in a journal in one language every year. So, so far I've written in Japanese, Chinese, Korean, and Hungarian. And you can see, yeah, maybe there are some Korean or English words in between here just because it was faster. But what I try to do is just force and push myself to use Japanese every single day. And don't be afraid of making mistakes when you do journal. As I mentioned earlier, I'm restarting my French and it's quite tricky. So you can see my friend has given me a few corrections here in pink pen, and that's okay, that really helps me learn. And because I'm journaling about my day or something that's interesting to me, 
When I do get corrections, it helps me remember it better because it was relevant to me. I'm not just looking at a textbook about, you know, uh, I lost my suitcase or how do I get to the bus station? That's not relevant to me now. What I want to talk about is my daily life, my hobbies, the world around me. And that's what journaling really helps with. So language learning is not just about your methods and um, having the best resources or, or textbooks or friends to practice with. A lot of it is a mindset shift as well. So I started developing new mindset habits to help me approach language learning that have been really beneficial. So I'll share with you two mindsets. The first one is flexibility. Being resourceful with what you have available. If you don't have a textbook, that's okay. You can find different ways to learn the language. About 10 years ago in South Africa, you could not find a single Korean textbook. And I don't even think my phone was able to download apps back then. So I tried, that's why I you know, went to work at the Korean restaurant or tried to look for something in the library. Try and create your own resources. Go out there and be resourceful and flexible. And we know that with the whole coronavirus situation, we have to adapt a lot of ways that we do normal daily things. So previously, language exchange. I could go out to a language exchange event uh, every week and practice speaking languages with different people. So here's a photo at an event called Mundo Lingo in Singapore. You put a little flag of the language you speak and you go around and talk to people. And that really helped me learn languages but now we can't do that anymore. So being flexible and not telling myself language learning has to look like this or I have to follow this plan. If I'm more flexible, I can adapt to change. So now maybe I'm just using an app to learn French or I've recently bought my first French textbook in over you know, eight years because I know I can't go out and talk to someone in person. Let me find some different methods. So it can help if you adapt um, flexibility and resourcefulness so that you don't create um, very rigid guidelines for yourself that might frustrate you or block you from growing in a language. Something that does help me, however, is tracking the time I spend learning languages. Right now, it almost feels like all the days are just meshed into one. I'm working from home. I don't even know if it's Monday or Friday. But what helps me is to just use an app. If you're interested, I'm not sponsored. The name of this app is Toggle and I use it to track the amount of time I spend on languages. So Magyar means Hungarian. So I spent uh, six hours learning Hungarian in a specific week here. And I just write it down in my journal. It doesn't mean that I'm forcing myself to do a specific amount, but it helps me to see where does my time go. Sometimes we are really hard on ourselves and we think, I'm never gonna get fluent in this language and I, I'm learning so much, but I can't get anywhere. And then if you start maybe really tracking your time, then you can see maybe you're spending more time than you thought and you can be proud of yourself. Or you can analyze it at the end of the week and say, hmm, maybe I should change things up. I've been spending a lot of time reading, but not, enough, not a lot of time practicing an important language. So time tracking can help you if you, um, interp um, if you implement it in a flexible way. You don't need to tell yourself, learn five hours a week. There's no magic amount of time. Just uh, track what you're doing already and see how you can fit it into your schedule and your daily life. The last mindset that I'll mention is fearlessness, taking up new challenges. When you learn a language, a new language, you are going to sound like a baby. You have no vocabulary, it's very scary to speak, but stepping out of your comfort zone is gonna help you learn faster and grow as a person. That's really the biggest benefit that language learning has brought to my life is to grow in confidence and not being afraid to make mistakes. Nobody's gonna laugh at you. It's okay if you make mistakes. That's really how we learn. So now that I'm learning Hungarian, I'm trying to challenge myself to do very difficult things. I've only been learning for a few months and I'm really a beginner, but um, I read on Twitter recently, somebody said, if I want to do something, but it's really scary, I'm still gonna try. And that's really the motto I wanna um, adopt for this year. Even if I'm afraid, I'm gonna try, and that will help me grow. Now that doesn't mean 
if you're an introvert or if you're shy that you suddenly have to go and talk to a million people. Just try to do small, small things that are outside your comfort zone and you'll see how you will grow. This is uh, just a still from a video about two weeks ago. I was speaking on Hungarian radio and I might look like I'm comfortable and know what I'm saying, but on the inside, I was super scared and I was trembling and no one could see that, hopefully. Um, but I like to just challenge myself and put myself out of my comfort zone. I did mention this earlier. My motto is if I want to try it, but I'm scared, I'll do it anyway. So about two years ago, there was a big polyglot conference in Japan, in Fukuoka. And it was my first time speaking live on stage in front of a lot of people. And even though it was scary, it was so rewarding to be able to connect with fellow language learners and share with them my love of learning languages. And really, if you get past um, the scary aspect of speaking in a language or even speaking about a language to other people, you'll realize that the language learning community online or in real life, we're all just very, very excited about languages. And it's so rewarding to just be able to talk about it with other people. And I'm really excited to see that you guys have a language club at your school. I never had that um, when I was growing up at school. So I think it's amazing what you guys are doing here and building your own language community. If you are interested, I talk a little bit more about mindsets um, on videos on my YouTube channel. Here are some examples of mindsets related to language learning. You're welcome to check it out at youtube.com slash lindybuddhist. And I also write on Medium or on my blog a little bit about language learning too. So the last part of my presentation uh, is some results. What can language learning bring to you? We all know that learning a new language will help you understand a new culture or be able to talk to more people. But specific to me, the golden thread throughout this presentation is learning languages help me grow in confidence. The more languages you learn, the more cultures you have to interact with. Remember, languages and cultures cannot really be separated. It'll cause you to expand the way you think and question things. I remember living in Japan, there were moments where I thought, why are people doing things this way? Why do Japanese people have a word for that? And I don't have a word for that in English. Learning a language will really allow you to question maybe the way you were brought up or the way you see the world. And that helps you grow and connect with a broader audience. With each language I learned, I grew a bit more in confidence. So as I said, I used to be incredibly shy, but now I'm okay to speak at conferences and be here today to share with you. Again, a result of language learning is you grow to not be afraid of making mistakes. You will sound like a child. It's okay. Everybody has been there and people are not out there to laugh at you. If we remove the pressure of perfection, we'll be able to learn faster, enjoy the process and succeed. I really struggle with perfection. And I think that's why I'm a designer so that I can work with pixels and I can tell the difference between one and two pixels on a screen so I can really live out perfection there. But when I'm learning a language, I have to let that go. I have to say, I don't need to be perfect. I'm okay to make mistakes. And the last thing is an enriched life. Learning languages has brought me job opportunities, um, the ability to share about language learning. Unfortunately, my camera cut out here, but it comes back in a few minutes, so do keep watching. I'm just going to try and re-record or voice over this part for you now. I finished off and just said something about how language learning really enriches your life, gives you more content to engage with. And then the next part, I moved on to what's next for me. And I said, I'm currently looking for ways to combine my two passions in life. So I work as a UX designer, and right now I'm exploring options to work with language learning apps and some interesting side projects. I've recently joined the team at Polyglass, which is a really cool language learning app where you can practice your reading and writing in a foreign language and play games with other people. So I'm working on this side project with a few friends, and it's a wonderful way to be combining both my design skills and language learning opportunities. And I'm also trying to write a few articles about UX design and languages. So I do write articles on Medium or on my blog about how designers and developers can better design for a multilingual audience. I also recently gave a presentation at um, last year's Polyglot conference about multilingual design. 
So you're welcome to ask me if you'd like the link for that. If any one of you is interested in digital design and how languages fit into that. And also I'd love to keep blogging and vlogging. I'm a little nervous, but also excited to hear that some of you have checked out my YouTube channel. So I'm really excited to keep creating language learning content and help to grow and inspire the language learning community. There's a lot of us on the internet. And now that we're so distant and working remotely, it's nice to have a space where people can share a common passion of language learning online. So let's recap. I want to I wanted to talk about my language story today. I hope it has helped you think about your language story. You, you all have your own language story, even if you speak one or 10 languages. It's never too late to start if you are interested in learning more. Just start small and build up your progress. I also touched on some methods. Everybody has different methods that work for them. Find one that works for you and be patient. I did speak about flexibility. The way I'm learning languages now is completely different from how I learned it five or 10 years ago. We can adapt and grow and even change our methods as we continue. And don't be afraid to try new things. Languages will open doors. As the famous Hungarian polyglot Kato Lom said, language is the only thing worth knowing even poorly. Even if you just know one or two words, people are going to respond to that in a positive way and you can start building connections with people. And then find your story, whether you're aspiring to be an engineer, designer, chef, historian, tailor, or scientist, you can incorporate languages into your daily life, whatever your field of interest or career will be. So to end off, we don't have to do this as an activity, but I do want to ask you to just have a think throughout the week or think today. What do you want your language story to look like? Is it a very personal thing for you? Are you just learning languages for yourself? Or do you want it to be external? Are you passionate about sharing about language learning? How might you do that with the people around you? Do you want to be a polyglot? Is it exciting for you to learn lots of languages? Or do you prefer to be more focused and really learn the depths and history of one language? These are all valid. Just think a bit, what do you want your story to look like? And then what are you passionate about outside of languages? and think how might you be able to combine your passion with languages. Thank you so much for having me here and for listening to my story. This is the end of my presentation and now I'm very happy to chat with you and take any questions you might have. Well, that's it. After that, there was a Q&A session and I was really just uh, blown away by how intelligent these students were and the really interesting questions they were asking me. I feel like at their age, when I was their age, I didn't even think about languages. Um, I didn't even learn as many languages as they were learning. So it was a great opportunity and uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation.